your backdrops here are quite impressive. Um, it looks like a nice fall scene, the good good country for the leaf peepers. Yes, I have my brother to thank for the good part of the backdrop. He painted the first six feet of it and hasn't visited since, so I had to do the rest myself. And that's where you see the drop off from what a good artist can do to what I can do when I'm fiddling around. Well, and nevertheless, it's um, backdrops are meant to be in the backdrop and not focus your uh, your eyesight on them so much as the trains. But as far as I can see, it looks like an excellent job all around. The uh, fall scenery painting really does uh, bring out the colors which are so typical of this uh, area. I, get, I bet you've taken a number of trips down into um, Vermont and seen many a fall scene like this. It's funny, the photographic evidence actually does suggest the colors are quite bright. You don't uh, think of them as being that bright until you actually see them. Um, of course, it all depends on the time of year. You have to pick the right two weeks to catch it. Okay, so we're now behind the main backdrop of your railroad room and we're in the laundry room and I'm just about to show you here some of the staging and uh, Dave, you, maybe you can uh, describe a little bit about how you came up with this concept. Well, it was of necessity as much as anything else because uh, the financial boss of this whole organization barred me from expanding the railway into this room in any way shape or form but didn't mind if I put a shelf down the edge of this room which is used as you can see in good Canadian fashion for hockey skate and figure skate storage. Um, what we have here are three staging tracks one being occupied right now by a Boston and Maine milk train that heads north early in the morning out of Boston the next one being op occupied by a northbound version of the uh, Alouette to Montreal with an E7 at the front end. And the final track here is where we park locomotives that go from staging because this represents the West Lebanon uh, engine shed roundhouse area. So we have a Boston and Maine F7AB and a Boston and Maine RS3 sitting here waiting to go into action. So across the laundry room on the other side over here, on this shelf, there's uh, the staging that comes in, I guess, at the uh, other end of White River Junction. Well, this is a bit interesting because it's more than just White River Junction oh, you're looking okay. at here. You're looking at Montpelier, Vermont, and yeah. points north to St. Albans. The first two tracks you can see underneath all this shelving are the uh, tracks that go on to White River Junction. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are the central Vermont lines up to the north. Right. And the two tracks in behind that run off in this area here, yes, that's the main central line. Okay, that goes to St. Johnsbury that you saw earlier. Oh, okay. And there's a couple of uh, maroon and white F units sitting there, or maroon and yellow rather F units sitting there, maroon and gold. One is a main central freight coming in from Portland. The one in behind is actually a Boston and Maine passenger train coming from Berlin, New Hampshire which is one of the first trains that runs out uh, during the day heading uh, south to Boston. That's the Day White Mountain Express stashed in there. Excellent. In this and uh, hole here it looks almost like a Y and uh, another train. Where is it heading? Uh, that's another one of the staging tracks. That's the third staging track coming out of St. Johnsbury and it actually goes to Gilman uh, on, a, on the main central and that staging track runs completely underneath St or underneath uh, White River Junction. It goes down a fairly steep grade. And that was before I was allowed to expand into the laundry room. I had one staging track all incorporated within the layout but hidden underneath White River Junction. Just thought I'd uh, pop back over here and look at some of the other staging tracks that you have. Uh, there's one in the back here Looks like it's got a CPR locomotive caboose and a steam engine that goes into a tunnel underneath here to a certain extent. It's right back in here. What's up, Dave? 
the uh, steam locomotive you're looking at is the transfer run that comes from Woodsville, uh, New Hampshire, across the Connecticut River into Wells River once a day. Mm -hmm. And that's a B and M 280, which by 56, 57 would have been gone. Uh, the other locomotive and caboose you see back there, the CPR van, uh, they're just sitting there waiting for a milk train to come in and they'll be taking over that. That's uh, open staging in that area. And that on the fore a change uh, as much as a storage. Now in the foreground here I notice that there's another, another tunnel coming out but the, the uh, looks like something from the Lamoil Valley St. Uh, J area. Yeah, this is a visible staging track yeah. which provides an opportunity for a little bit of uh, scenic treatment. Um, this is where the SJ and LC train is kept during the operating session and at the appropriate time it's allowed into St. Johnsbury. It does its switching in St. Johnsbury and then those two 70 tonners will hook on to the train and bring it back up the Lamoil Valley at least as far as the edge of the layout defined by the nail. <laughs> this is a nice little uh, panel uh, and I see that there is a an interesting kind of switch arrangement that you have uh, set on it. Uh, this is uh, something you made yourself and uh, I guess what it does is it controls the the yard throat and uh, some of the directions the train can go. Well that's correct. One of the things that causes problems for operators is this area right here. That's a double slip switch which is just ahead of the locomotive on the yard. Uh, people have a great deal of trouble when you were using Caboose Industries throws getting this thing lined up properly and with DCC we suddenly discovered the joys of sound being interrupted and the beeping sounds of short circuits. Uh, it became imperative that something be done about that double slip. Mm -hmm. While I was doing that, which was a couple of tortoise switch motors thrown underneath it with some wiring through LEDs, I also installed tortoises on the next two in the yard throat areas here mm -hmm. at the entrance at the south end of Newport Yard. Um, it's very simple. The key is when you're throwing these toggles or throwing these rotary switches to line it up, don't look at the track itself on the layout. That will confuse you. Look strictly at the board and follow the green route. Uh, since that's been installed, my operators have been much happier. Can you throw your snaps there and show you how the, how the color changes in terms of the direction? Sure. Right now we've got a line that follows that way on the green through mm -hmm. the double slip. If we were bringing a locomotive straight through, we simply change this set of LEDs to line up what we want so that we now know that the route you can use is the route straight through that way. Mm -hmm. At the moment, since the locomotive is sitting in front of this red LED, we want to go to that route.